Hello peeps, it's the 29th of July 2018 and here in Essex UK the weather has changed considerably. It's about 19 degrees C today, there's about 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Had a heat wave here, seems to have gone on for ages, like the last two months or so. Last week temperatures are 30 to 35 degrees C, so considerably warm here, but the ground really was like dust, you know. Seriously needed some rain, so I've had a thunderstorm, some rain, some wind. The air feels clear, I mean you can... You probably just heard that gust of wind over the polytunnel here. But um, as you know, if you've been watching my channel, I put a video up a few weeks ago or last week, whatever, about a self-sufficiency. And an aim I've got for myself is to try and eat something I've grown myself every day. So even if that's just a bit of kale and a bit of spinach, or at the moment, you know, I've got a lot of things like courgettes and marrow. So that's an achievable goal for me. And I think for many of you out there, that will be an achievable goal yourself. Even if you've just got, um, you know, like I mentioned in the other video, spinach here in a small pot on your windowsill inside your kitchen, something like that. So what I'm doing is thinking about winter vegetables because it won't be long now until the winter is here. Now, I know many of you out there don't want to think about it, but um, you don't want to be caught with your trousers down, so to speak. You want to make sure you've got something to eat in the winter months if that's your goal that you've grown yourself. So what am I going to grow? Now, I like things to be dependable, things I've grown a lot of before, sweet and dependable like a good woman. So let's have a look what I'm going to grow. Perpetual spinach, leaf beet, and some dwarf green curled kale. Now both of these are, you know, grown a lot of these here if you're following me, you'll know that I'm very fond of both of these and they can withstand harsh cold winters. I mean we had we had a lot of snow. Oh, I think it was uh, I think it was March, very cold here, had kale and it, you know, it came up smiling, so there we go. But I'm gonna grow something I've never grown before and this looks rather cool. Apparently it's an Italian thing. Broccoli Rob, 60 days from Mr. Fothergills. Take a look at that, which crops, unsurprisingly, within 60 days apparently. So what I'm going to do is grow a load of this. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna do the way that I like to grow things. And I'm gonna use my trusty window sill propagators now these really come into their own a bit more you know in in the spring late winter when you want to get stuff started give them a little bit of extra heat not uh, totally necessary at this time of year but the reason why i'm going to grow these is just in case any critters decide to come out here in the polytunnel and eat uh, the seeds that i've grown because i don't want that to happen so i'll show you how i'm going to go about doing that so that's my window sill propagator if you've been following me, you'll know I'm very fond of these, but um, I'll just show you, you know, a nice close-up like that. So, there you go. These came from, I think, U Garden. I think I ordered these. They're on special offer. Very, very cheap indeed. You can get them from places like, um, you know, Pound Stretchy. I think you can get them from, I think you get them from Savers, Aldi's. Get them from Home Base, B and Q. You get the idea. But they're very good, and if you look after them, they'll last year upon year. So. What I'm going to do is use my normal way that I grow things. I like things to be nice and straightforward, nice and organised. Excuse the mess here in the polytunnel, I'm going to be sorting that out. But as you can see down here, I'm just trying to zoom this in. There you go. Push that down there. In that pot there, I've just got, um, I think it's a 30 litre tub. And what I've got in there is just basic multi-purpose compost. I think it's home base variety. Is it J. Arthur Bowers, I think they call it, something like that. And um, I like to support home base because they've been through a bit of trouble of late. A few stores have closed, and uh, fortunately, we've been able to keep the store around here. So I'm very happy about that. So put the camera up like so. Right. Okay, so I've got me trays here and I'm going to proceed to fill them up. In fact it'd be even nicer for you if you can see what I'm doing right here. So I'll keep it pointed down. There we go. There we go, like so. I mean I was out here shirtless long ago you certainly wouldn't want to do that today a little bit uh, a little bit breezy but it's I mean I, I do like the warm weather but it is actually a nice welcome break so I'm gonna pull that up like that So 
So there you go, you see, filled up nicely with uh, normal multi-purpose compost there. Now what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'll better see what these are when they come up, so I'm not going to bother about labelling them, but broccoli, I'm going to put that in first. Let's have a look at these seeds. Quite nifty this. Anyone out there's grown this? Rob, 60 days. Whoops, don't want too many. Because I never have. And it'll be quite interesting to see just what uh, what it looks like. And what it's like. Apparently it produces like spears, you know. There you go. So normal like brassica seeds. So what I'm going to do is proceed to set them. Okay. So all I'm going to do, put my seeds in like this. And all being well, I should be able to get a nice crop off of these. I'm only going to grow six plants because I, I get the impression they're going to be quite a fair size. I'll show you what I've done there. Look. There you go. So you can see, like the seeds on top there and there. And what I'm going to do is unzoom. That's it. And I'm simply going to push them in like so. Just like that. One of the Ronnies used to say that, didn't he? So there we go, just there. And the next one up is going to be perpetual spinach leaf beet. This really is a great thing to grow, perpetual spinach. I mean, you know, probably won't turn you into Popeye, but um, a very versatile dish or vegetable. We can use it in so many things used as a substitute I think in many Asian dishes you know to represent a vegetable or whatever that you can't uh, you know you can't get here so easily or can't grow here that's what I've been told anyway might help if I got the right one wouldn't it so just like that and we'll just give you an idea of what I've got there there you go That's what I've done there and next up is going to be the kale if you're gonna grow kale yeah I've spoke a lot about it but it can't be mentioned enough you've got to protect it from birds when it's young and when it's bigger You've got to make sure cabbage white butterflies can't get to it. So I won't speak too much about that, but uh, got to protect them, yeah? Make sure the caterpillars can't get to them and they proceed to lay the eggs all over the, uh, the leaves. Just like that. Just like that, just like that. Good. So there you go, the same with the kale seeds, just like that. And what I'm going to proceed to do is cover them up. So we'll just unzoom the older uh, camera here, move the camera back, just like that. I'm just going to put a little bit of compost on the top of each one, like that. I've already done that one, haven't I? I'd be quite surprised just how much food will come from these few seeds 
this very simple way that I like to grow things. So there you go, and what I'm going to do is I'll just get one of these. I'll show you the I'll show you the full beauty, so to speak, of windowsill propagators. It's not that important this time of year because it's pretty warm, or at least it will be next week again. But what you do is you get your windowsill propagator like that, and then you put your top on. So it gives you a little bit of extra warmth, and this is particularly good, as I said, said earlier, in you know late winter, spring just to give you a bit of extra warmth, even if you've got it inside in the house for germinating things that are maybe a bit more stubborn. I mean, I grew geraniums in these, all sorts of varieties of geranium, and they did very well. They all germ, well, literally, probably about 80 to 90% of them germinated, so I think windowsill propagators are a good investment if, you, uh, if you're into that sort of thing. So I'm going to proceed to uh, put some water on those, and I'm going to put them in inside, and uh, they will germinate very quickly, then I'll plant them out soon. So, what else have I been up to? Now, you may remember some papayas that uh, I set. Well, here you go. A papaya has germinated. That one looks very good, actually. You've got some nice leaves on that. Looks very healthy, doesn't it? If I let you have a look at that one there. And this one has germinated as well, a bit smaller, but I think I set five seeds, not bad. Obviously these will require winter protection, so these will be coming in in the winter. <laughs> this one here tried to germinate, but something bit its head off, and that can be a problem if you're trying to do well and your head gets removed, not easy. So there we go, in that regard, not much of a problem really. Now in here I've got a little bit of an experiment going down, because Dan likes to experiment with things, and Tithonia. Now these are an absolutely fantastic thing to grow. Monty Don had them apparently on garden as well, but to Mexican sunflowers, and man look at the size of this, it's about, um, well it's nearly six foot now, and the Part of the reason why I'm growing it here in the polytunnel is because I want to see if I can overwinter it. I might find a way of protecting it, but I'd love a huge tithonia plant in this polytunnel that takes up the, you know, a lot of space. I'd really like that. That really would be cool. But um, you know, I've got all sorts of these, and we'll have a look at some other tithonias I've got to growing. They don't only have to be grown you know, like this. You can grow them in pots as well. Doing very well, actually. Okay, so I've got some more Tithonia, Mexican sunflower here, and um, you can grow them in pots as you can see, like down here, and they don't get too big in pots for obvious reasons, because they can't spread their roots, but this is not necessarily a bad thing, because what I might do is take these in in the winter months and overwinter them, then put them out next year, and I think these are proving... You know, they're proving a very good thing to grow and the, the bees love them and they, they just add a beautiful beautiful color to one's garden and they can get large you know if they're in the ground or a large pot I did see some like seven maybe even eight feet tall last year great things to grow okay so these are some geraniums that I grew from seed each and every one of these has been grown by my own fair hand and uh, I'm very very happy with how these have turned out I got the seeds um, most of them I think were from Mr. Fothergill's but um, good quality seeds and you know some good quality plants what's happened here it's just a shame when high winds snap the flowers but uh, can't do anything about that and I grew them a bit what was a bit later than what would have been ideal but never mind they're starting to come into flower now but um, 
and when the bad weather gets here I will have to take these in. I'm not going to leave them outside for the frost to kill them because you know I want to overwinter them and keep them year on year because uh, growing these geraniums it's, it's really a thing that I'd like to get more into because I've got a lot of pleasure actually from growing these and I've been dabbling a lot more with flowers this year because up until this year really I was a, a vegetable and fruit only gardener but uh, I'm expanding my skills so I'm very happy about that look lovely don't they even better when the flowers come it's starting to come there <laughs> okay so see these are some marigolds African marigolds and they're looking very good as well you can see my lovely trainers in there can't you there they are Rebox. But yeah, so looking pretty, you know, I need to deadhead these, more flowers to come, I think. But yeah, grew these myself as well, and uh, you know, they're nice. Again, a bit of pot culture there. <laughs> pot culture, oh dear. A bit of a container culture, shall one say. Bumblebee there, look on another Tithonia flower. I made sure I grew a lot of these Tithonias, because I knew that the uh, bumblebees loved them so much. And for pollination and just, you know, food for the bees, and we all like a bit of honey. Bloody bloody blah. Okay, so once again, this is a bit more about preparation for winter. So we've got some lettuce here, and this is variety winter density. And this is a fully hardy lettuce, and it's a very tasty one as well. And what I want to do is grow more of this. I mean, this is beautiful. Imagine this with a bit of salad cream. Really fresh tasting lettuce and as I stated before, it's only a small pot. Like that look. And you can see the amount of lettuce coming from here. Growing them just as salad leaves. So imagine if you just had that pot. And you just had that. You could comfortably get a decent volume of lettuce from that, couldn't you? Look how lovely and healthy and nutritious that is. Beautiful stuff, and fully winter hardy. What more do you want, eh? Okay, so as you know, I'm not shy of sharing my things I don't do so good at certain times, and this year, due to being too busy and it slipping my mind, I didn't tie up my tomatoes. So as you can see, they've all fallen over. Or well, many of them have fallen over, but never mind, as gardeners delight that is. It doesn't bother me because, end of the day, the tomatoes are still there. And, oh, that was lovely. Oh, rotten that one. We've got loads of them to come all over the show, look. And what I'm going to do is to just leave them here because these plants will be coming out anyway, and I'll probably put some spinach in for the winter when it comes but uh, you know so many courgettes as well down there look marrow so much good nutritious food here I've got loads of different tomato plants all over the show this is variety sweet million they need to be redder than this really but I don't mind eating them when they're a bit sharpish maybe not that sharpish but not, they don't have to be totally red for me. Now, I've got loads of them. Look. Dan's crazy garden. I don't mind things a bit crazy. And Mitatis, Mitatis. Where are they? Down here, look. These will be coming soon. Variety Sarpo Mirrors. Got a sweet corn here, and uh, very small still. Probably the fact that uh, didn't really have enough rain. But, uh, you know, not the end of the world. Okay, so down here, this is something I'm very, very happy with, and a great vine cutting I took myself of Lake Mont Seedless, and you can see just how much growth has come off of this, and what the plan is, is to put up some sort of trellis or some sort of supports, whatever, even something as simple as bamboo canes for this to climb up, and I'm expecting some crop off of this vine next year it's up against this south facing wall so it absolutely adores it here but it really has put some growth out i mean if you think i only took the cutting last year i think it was spring 2017 late winter late winter 2017 and this is like you know 18 months growth or something so it really has put out a lot of growth and i'm expecting as i stated a nice crop off of this next year 
tumbling toms starting to come nice and tasty they are and and the best thing about tumbling toms is you can grow them in pots and just put them in and leave them don't have to worry too much about tying them up so for busy people tumbling toms when it comes to growing tomatoes are maybe one of the best things to grow if they looked after properly and everything is ideal conditions etc they'll tumble down pots and you'll get masses of crop So yeah, lots of plans there. What I'm going to be doing soon is setting a load of geraniums. I, what I want to do is propagate them in these windowsill propagators and then proceed to pot them up later in the year. And I want to overwinter them. I've got somewhere to put them now, so that's brilliant. And I want to try and grow some decent sized geranium plants. I might even go for around 100 or so because uh, you know I like geraniums and I find that it's, it's sort of a, a flower to grow that sort of stokes my stokes my passion so to speak so that's something else that uh, I want to have a go at so I'm going to have a bit more a little bit of a water here in the polytunnel now just put a bit of, uh, gonna put a bit of water on my uh, papayas here because obviously it's uh, been watering been raining outside but uh, none of that water's got in this polytunnel so having a bit of a water weather's going to come back so I hope everybody out there is doing well and I'm thinking soon <clears throat> of starting the uh, container challenge of you know growing something in in a container and like setting up like a little sort of motivational thing that we can all do together in the sense of you know just encouraging people to start growing their own food because <clears throat> you know I spoke I touched on this a little bit the other day and I think it's going to become, you know, more important now than in recent times it has been to start growing our own food due to changes because changes in things that are happening in the world and even changes in the weather because if you think about uh, you know, the weather that uh, we've had over the last you know, two months or so, we've had a very hot and warm summer move the camera in here so just in case it uh, just in case you can't hear what I'm saying because of the wind we've had a very hot and warm summer and I think uh, you know climate change climate, climate change is indeed happening and we're gonna have to learn to be adaptable because end of the day if the climate changes and food security is threatened water security is threatened we need to be in a position to help ourselves and help each other because if you can't just rely all the time on just going down the supermarket or the shop market whatever corner shop whatever to buy your food you might have to be more reliant upon yourself and I'm not saying this to scare people because that's not what this is about it's more about empowering yourself and empowering each other to be more resilient should uh, things happen that um, you know that indeed could because the older viewers out there may remember the dig for victory thing from World War Two, and maybe for different reasons, you know, we need to start doing more of that now. So, hope everybody out there is doing well. Haven't responded to questions on previous videos because I've been rather busy, but uh, I'm going to get this video up over the next week or so. I'm going to probably you know, respond to some questions. That's what I want to do. So, yeah, take care, speak soon, and happy gardening and growing. All the best.